I'm Geert van Bokstel. I'm an associate professor at Tilburg University in the Netherlands in the Department of Cognitive Neuropsychology and I've been working a long time in the field of electrophysiology and I'm interested mostly in uh, the relationship between brain and behavior. So now the brain generates electricity in big, slow waves and fast, small waves. So it varies in frequency content. The faster the waves that the brain generate, the more active the brain is. And slow waves are a sign of inactivity. So for instance, if you're going about your everyday business during the day, you will likely show fast, small waves. And you can measure that from the scalp. And then if you go to sleep at night, the waves become slower and slower and slower. And that means you're falling asleep deeper and deeper and deeper. And now the alpha waves, which were called alpha, which is the first letter of the alphabet, because the, the, these were the first waves discovered about 100 years ago. They are a little bit in between. They are quite slow, but not as slow as sleep. So it is uh, in the beginning of uh, after the discovery, they have been uh, associated with a relaxed wakefulness. Since then, a lot of uh, research has happened, of course, and um, what is clear about alpha waves is that they are uh, coupled to the brain's inactivity. So whenever the brain is relaxed, doesn't have to process anything, then you get alpha waves. Now, and then we're trying to make use of that uh, finding. Uh, by training alpha waves, can we influence relaxation, can we influence focus, Focus and relaxation are very tightly coupled. People playing a musical instrument will know this. They can play the guitar for hours and hours and they, they come in a sort of relaxed wakefulness where they are focused, shut off everything besides their in instrument. And this is typically what we would call an alpha state.